Okay. We are live. We are ready. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to October. We were just talking about how cold it is and rainy and how we don't remember fall being like this. So it take a little getting used to. But you know me, I'm Martha, the marketing coordinator at Top Floor. And so today on The Hot Dish, we're doing something a little bit different. Usually we talk about the trends in digital marketing and things that are going on. Um, but today I'm super excited to bring on three of my wonderful teammates and members of our Employee Satisfaction Committee, which is called Top Blue. We'll talk a little bit more about what that is in a couple minutes. But um, I'm super pumped to have Leah, Emily, and Abby with me, and we're going to be talking about Top Floor's culture. Um, so basically, Top Floor is great. Working at Top Floor is great. But since the pandemic hit in March, we've really had to focus on how to shift and support our employees as we move to 100% virtual work. So we are used to being in the office nine five and seeing each other's faces, being at our desks and being able to turn around and say, hey, things have changed. Um, we also, before all of this, had a great culture of doing lots of activities and team building things. And obviously we can't be in person, so things have changed a lot. Um, bottom line, everybody has a learning curve when it comes to working from home. So we've had to really work hard to shift our culture and those changes have really come from the top down. So um, one thing I would just like to say is that we have great leadership who have really encouraged us to kind of, you know, figure out how to make this work for everybody. And we've had great support from day one. So um, I think everybody feels pretty supported and comfortable while uh, still finding success and figuring out our footing during this crazy time. So one thing I wanted to ask you guys, um, how have you felt, how have you personally felt um, supported by Top Floor and the management team during the pandemic? I can start, I don't know what order we wanna go in. <laughs> um, but I think for me working from home at first, I loved it. I was so productive, I was all about it and then I, now I'm like really missing people. And so I'm like loving video chats and all that. But a great way that management supported us is they're super flexible. They're like, if you need to take a break, go for a walk. Like we're not monitoring, you know, how long your mouse is moving on your screen or like anything crazy. Like they let us kind of be flexible with our day or we can run an errand or just take a little break. Um, Cause everyone's situation is different. So I like how like, they know that we're humans and they know that this is different and not what we signed up for initially. So for me, I have really the flexibility that we've got. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I was gonna say kind of stemming off that too. It's just been really nice because they do encourage us to get up. Like Chad, one of our managers would sometimes message us saying, guys, it's really nice outside, get outside, go for a walk. Um, and I've even found myself like, because I don't want to sit down and be so stagnant. So I've started to like work out. I was telling Emily this earlier today, like I bought a yoga mat and I've started to work out in between um, doing some tasks and some other stuff, just because I also want to make sure that I'm okay, but then I'm also being as productive as I possibly can during the time that I am doing work for um, my clients, but then also for top floor. So it's just been nice to be able to take like those five to 10 minute breaks that we would normally do in the office, walking around and talking to someone or asking questions um, to also take time for ourselves during the day. Um, Cause you know, self care is definitely very important, but it's also appreciated by our um, management team as well. Totally. Yeah. It's, it's interesting that uh, Emily and, and Abby brought up those, points. I mean, they obviously they are important as well. For me, I was never one to really like enjoy working from home. Um, I was always one to, to say like, oh, I'm always more productive in the office. 
And I still think that that is true. Um, it definitely took me a long time to kind of adjust working from home, but I finally, you know, found the groove and am more comfortable now working from home. And I think one of the things too is that uh, being the digital designer for Top Floor, you know, there are a lot of things that I need as a designer to do my job right. So the management team is always open if. I need to reach out saying, hey, I need a new sketchbook or, hey, like, you know, I don't have this for my computer. I need this program to do my job. And so they're very accommodating to figure out how to get those programs and assets for, I mean, not just me, but other team members as well to make sure that we can do our job right. That's awesome. Yeah. So Leah, do you have any you said you, you do better in the office, but do you have any tips or tricks to working from home? Do you, is there anything you've found that really helps you be more productive at home? Um, yeah, so I particularly like to be, to make up a space that is kind of dedicated to work. Um, now, obviously that's not always the case. Um, because we like to see sunshine and if it's nice out, you know, it might be nice to like sit by a window. Uh, in my case, I, I just have a small den in my condo. So that's kind of my, my work area, but there's no windows in it. So sometimes I will kind of transition out into the living room, but just having that dedicated space, it helps me to just focus on work and not get distracted by the little things happening. And then also, establishing that routine in the morning. Um, obviously it took a while for me to figure out, okay, when am I doing this? And, you know, and when, uh, and when certain things need to happen, but now it's like, I get up at this time, I, I take a shower, um, and I, you know, I make sure that I am ready. I, it, it doesn't mean like getting like, you know, dressed up to the nines, you know, but still just pretending it is almost like a normal day, except I'm not going into the office. Yeah. I like that. I read an article recently about, um, Emily, you mentioned this a little bit earlier, work from home burnout and how it's becoming more and more prevalent for these people who are used to being in the office and used to having that that atmosphere who are all of a sudden finding themselves at home 100% of the time. Um, and that burnout comes from juggling work and maybe a household and maybe a crazy four year old like I have. Um, and then kids virtual schooling and all this other stuff. So um, I love the idea of establishing that routine. Um, and I think, you know, we've all talked about how prioritizing your mental health has been has been really important taking those breaks getting your walks and exercise in so um i think that we're we're really on the right path there okay so helped. oh go ahead oh, i just have one more thing because yeah. leah covered everything that's like all the tips <laughs> Something that I've been doing recently, which obviously not everyone would be comfortable with this, but there's been days where I'm like, I need to get out of this house. So I'll, um, I'll work at a local coffee shop that honestly, it's usually always empty anyway, mm -hmm. but even just a change of scenery, like I get so much done and that's how it was before, like in the office, you know, I was very productive and then it would kind of slow down and then I'd have a work from home day and be really productive. It's something about like the change of scenery. So yeah. that's something that's helped me. And it's just like once every few weeks, but I'm going to switch it up. Awesome. Okay. So I think let's move on to our next kind of topic. Um, we mentioned top blue in the opening and I wanted to throw it over to Emily to kind of talk about what that means to top four. Yeah, so top blue is our employee satisfaction committee. It stands for top badass leaders unifying employees. <laughs> I always have to like double check. Um, so it's a committee of maybe six-ish people and we really focus on employee engagement, whether it's events or sending out like employee satisfaction surveys to see where people are struggling and where the company can help support them. 
so we've had this committee as long as I worked at top floor and then we just kind of rotate who's in it every year or so to get you know, fresh people. Um, but I, I was on it a while ago and then I rejoined at the beginning of this year and we had all these cool plans for the year in January and February. We were, we were going to do a spring cleaning of the office. We were going to do a spring cleaning of like files on our computer. We had plans for St. Patrick's Day. We like started a calendar of everything we were going to do this year. And then mid-March, we said, well, scrap all of it <laughs> because this is not going to work anymore. And we really like, I mean, Leah and Abby are both on the committee too. Um, but we really just had to kind of start from square one and say, how do we keep people engaged? None of us, like we've always had the option to work from home on occasion, but never run 100%. Mm -hmm. So we kind of said like at that time, we're like, okay, we had plans for St. Patrick's Day. Like, do we do it virtually? Like, what do we do here? And just we had to, we shifted and did virtual activities and you guys help me remember what the heck we've done <laughs> but there's been a lot and we just we shifted basically so yeah. that's what that committee is so how do you keep an employee an employee engaged you know with events when everything's virtual yeah i think some of it came naturally and our need for that interaction like we've always done beer club on Friday afternoons and that's still happening. And it's just virtually, we just were on, you know, on zoom and chatting. So a lot of it came naturally. Um, I don't know, Leah or Abby, if you want to speak to like a few of the, the events we've done and people come. Yeah. I was even just going to say like, beyond that, we use Slack as our internal communication and we've kind of opened up a lot of different Slack channels. So initially we would always do like, if there was a day, it would be like grilled cheese day. And then we'd make it in the office all together. And then we'd eat grilled cheeses, but unfortunately we couldn't do stuff like that. So we made a show us your lunch. And then every single week, the winner um, that receives the most amount of like thumbs up emojis, I just wanted to do all emojis, but I got outruled. So <laughs> we did the thumbs up emojis. And if everyone, um, whoever wins that actually ends up getting that an Amazon gift card, um, which is just like another incentive because I mean, while working from home, sometimes it's hard to, I guess, remember to take like those breaks. I mean, even to eat lunch and stuff like that. So it's more of like, it serves as a reminder, but then also it's kind of like, oh, I got a $15 gift card. I'll go buy a book or something else to do while you're still in this quarantine mode. It's so fun to see, like, Abby is, if you don't mind me calling you out, you Abby's fun to, like, make a bowl of mashed potatoes and take a picture, and that's her lunch. And people vote for her because it's just funny. <laughs> but I'm, you get to see, like, originally in the kitchen, we'd be like, oh, that smells really good. What are you eating? So it's, like, a virtual way to share your lunch and win money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, mine typically do get called out as being the bland lunches, but, you know, I'm <laughs> totally fine with it. I like my buttered rice and you know, it's what I eat. Yeah. Um, but we definitely really enjoy that because I mean, people have all kinds of things like, oh, here's leftover pizza from the other week or I made this. And then sometimes it also gives, I mean, I find myself like looking at what other people make and coming up with ideas for like different dinners and stuff like that. Um, but then with that, we also wanted to have I guess some more fun components. So like surviving working from home is something um, we've had, which just kind of is somewhere where we dump like ideas, different things to do. Um, we also have a random channel, which sometimes just brings up some random events, um, very random from like breaking your head open to like going somewhere or all these really interesting um, events that happen in everyone's life, basically, just to bring the mood kind of higher. Um, and I definitely can say I, I love seeing that one. But then just kind of going back to the employee engagement, but then also this reward kind of system, I really enjoy the shout out channel. I don't know if you guys do too, but it's really nice to get recognized, I guess, from either your other coworkers or managers. So on our shout out channel, it's just showing P 
people who have done great work within the last week or so um, and giving them that extra boost of enthusiasm or encouragement that they needed. Yeah, yeah. I would echo that too. It's um, every Monday morning when we're in the office, we usually have a stand up where we talk about shout outs and all that stuff. And obviously we still have that virtually, it's a little different, but that shout out channel and within Slack is just really nice for, um, for people who may not be in an account or not really know what's going on at all times to just kind of see what other people are doing in the company and um, keep people engaged in that way. So I love that one. Yeah, and I think too that in terms of just the the positive vibes and and shout outs that we we give to one another um the management team is also very active and aware of what's going on within the company so once in a while uh, we have had a what we call a swag delivery day um and that was uh strictly from our management team and there was just a, it's basically kind of like a goodie bag of of assortments of things that is, are branded with the top floor logo. Um, but it's just a, it was a really nice way of saying thank you for all the hard work that we have put in thus far since working from home. So that just goes, it's another example how the management team goes above and beyond to think about those things and think about their employees as well um, to, when it comes to that we're basically working every day, um, you know, from home. And yeah, so um, that's definitely how things have changed. And of course, you know, with some of these delivery options, you know, we are keeping it safe. We are, you know, taking initiatives, you know, to uh, keep things sanitary and, and stuff like that. But it's still a nice little way to, uh, to feel appreciated and and obviously represent top floor with some new swag. So that's I always for my pullover for this. I switched at the last minute. <laughs> I was wearing my t-shirt yesterday, so you know, I should have saved it for today. Represent. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Okay, let's see. I'm popping back into our little outline to see. Something else we did that was cool that Leah that just reminded me of. So each quarter we do a company update where we go through sales and finances and whatever else is the update. And in, in the office we do catering. Well, that doesn't work. The time around management gave us, I think it was like $20 to spend on a local restaurant or takeout or whatever we want. And then they reimbursed us for it. So we still got like a little fancy lunch. I think I still ended up at Keto, but anyway, because that's what we normally <laughs> get. But you always do. Uh, you can't say no to Qdoba, but that was usually our like catering. So I'm like, oh, yeah, get Qdoba on the company update day. Mm -hmm. so that was another cool thing that we could do. Yeah. Which is also nice because we are starting to do all those meetings over Zoom, which we're using right now. And I really liked that we switched from go to to Zoom, mm -hmm. um, especially during this time, because every morning, like, regardless of how bad we look, most of us turn our cameras on and we're like, hi, guys. Um, <laughs> so it just kind of brings back in that humanistic component, I guess, because, I mean, sitting at home all day, I can say like the most human interaction I have is like talking to my TV if I see something that's weird or something. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. at the end of the day, I mean, I'm finally talking to people, but you know, it's just, it's nice to see other people through the screen, even though it's not in person. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I think Zoom has also provided, obviously, um, different ways to see everybody. Um, obviously that was kind of a, an issue with when we used to use go to, you couldn't see everybody. Now, obviously zoom has like the tile mode. You can see everybody, which is really nice. And then obviously you can put in cool backgrounds. Um, so, <laughs> so that has made it really fun, especially for when we do eat virtual events now, like baby showers and bridal showers, um, obviously, when we were in person, we would most likely go into uh, the training room downstairs to kind of have a larger space and, you know, put on these, you know, baby showers and bridal showers. But now it's, it's a lot more fun 
even with Zoom, we encourage everybody to, you know, change their background to something that matches the event. Um, and then uh, Abby always puts on wonderful trivia Kahoot games for us to they play. Have the best names. Yeah, yeah, she comes up with the great with some great names. So those are really I think my fun. last one was bridal quiz or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was horrible. Yeah. Well, that, that was a good one. That was yeah. A good one. So. That's a fun way to still like, I mean, battle showers and baby showers, they always have games. So we were still able to do that. And I'm pretty sure Kahoot's a free tool, right? Yeah. So I definitely recommend it if you need to use that. Yeah. It's definitely very user friendly, but then it also provides that experience where everyone, I mean, you can throw in the most random questions or the most generic questions and see how people answer it kind of interesting to see who ends up winning too because sometimes you don't think people know as much as they know or they're just guessing and then they're like whoa I won yeah well let's keep talking about this so um what else have we implemented since going virtual what other tools um I know the know your team tool has I been really love know your team so tell, yeah, tell us a little bit more about that yeah, I love Know Your Team because it, first of all, we use it right now for one-on-ones. Um, so every single week, we at least get a one-on-one -on -one with um, our manager. So mine's Emily. Um, she's my executive mentor. Um, <laughs> and I talk to her once a week, and then she kind of keeps track of our notes, which is really helpful already because then, A, I already know if I talk through a point, or B, it's just like consistent, and she puts in questions. I prep for it. Um, but then beyond that, I love like the questions that we can ask. So we can ask anyone in the office a, a random question. So there was one that was like, what was your favorite song 10 years ago? And with age differences, it's always just so funny. And I know some people have put some things in there and I've definitely commented saying, um, who is this? Or like some people will say like, I know Nickelback is a very like, questionable person Justin, <laughs> Justin our um our boss actually put that in and it was just funny because he's like I know everyone doesn't like them but this is one of the greatest albums or something I know Martha of course is <laughs> so it's just it's really cool to see what people have to say and then there was another question about like what would you not want to tell other people about yourself and that one always that one got very interesting with everyone's comments back. Um, so it's just been nice. It's one of those other uplifting things. And it also helps us to learn more about each other because we do have people who don't work in Wisconsin that we don't see even on the regular basis in the office. Um, and then with new onboarding or onboarding of new um, employees, it's been really nice because I feel like I already know a lot about our new employees without even meeting them in person. So, yeah, yeah. one kind of cool thing about that too is even you know you many companies had a hiring freeze and things like that, but we've actually been able to bring on some new employees during this pandemic, and I think that that really speaks to um, Top Floor as a company. And I would say that that onboarding process has been pretty straightforward. I mean, I I'm not new, but <laughs> I'm speaking for them, and I, I think that's accurate. Yeah. That it's been pretty successful. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. something that I really like, Abby kind of touched on it on Know Your Team as well, was different questions that she can prep for. Um, I don't do it every time, but there's a capability in Know Your Team where it has pre populated questions. And for one on one meetings, it makes it more, I don't want to say more productive, but instead of like, hey, Abby, how was your week? And that's it. Like, that's my only question typically is like, tell me what's going on and she'll tell me everything. But it has like specific questions like, what's something that, you know, what's a process that slows you down? Or tell me one challenge or what's one goal you have for the next week? Like, it gets more specific. So those conversations are more valuable. So that's a really helpful component on the management side of it, I would say. But yeah, and then all the interactive stuff, obviously. Today's question was, what's your favorite coffee? And I promptly went to the coffee shop right after because everyone made my favorite latte. 
Yeah, that's another thing from working from home. Whenever someone types like, oh, I'm going to get coffee, I feel like there's 10 of us that are like, yep, me too. I'm going to leave and get coffee right now. Yep. Mm -hmm. We try to bribe each other like, oh, you can just, you can bring me one if you want on your way. <laughs> well, nobody lives by each other. <laughs> we like to pretend. Love that. Is there so, any other tools? I think anything we missed? Yeah. Well, there is our new employee newsletter oh, that yeah. Martha, you can talk about. <laughs> um, <laughs> something that we, we kicked around for a super long time was doing an internal newsletter. Um, and we finally launched it. Um, and basically, each month it highlights um, employees, uh, fun facts, shout outs, um, any new client wins or anything like that. Um, employee anniversaries, birthdays, and that kind of stuff. And I think um, I love it because it's just a nice short break from everything else in your inbox. Um, and I think that's that's an, an, a, like a nice, fun, new addition to our culture. And, um, you know, we're always up for asking people what they want to see. So we do have like a, a feedback form that people can fill out and um, submit like funny quotes and different things about, you know, top floor and that we feature month to month. So I think it's, it's always fun to, to learn new things about our coworkers. Um, and Leah was featured a couple months ago and had this gorgeous picture in a sunflower field. I think we've all, we all want to do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely after that picture. I was Oh, I have to find a sunflower field now. It's just fun to see people's personalities outside of work. So mm -hmm. it's been kind yeah. of a good addition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think like on the topic of just, you know, new things that are kind of popping up within uh, top floor is that we have also started uh, different committees as well. So obviously we have top blue, um, but during this difficult time and, and time of uncertainty, um, we have been attending or have attended um, a conference called the 3% Conference, mm -hmm. which talks about how there was really 3% of like the creative department in companies was primarily women and how they really wanted to get that percentage up to about 50% and really start to talk about what it means to bring people of different ethnicity and especially people of color into the, the workplace as well and what that looks like. So because of that and uh, just kind of the what we've learned from that conference and then talking about what's been happening in, in the world today, Top Floor has created what we call the diversity equity and uh, and um, the uh, committee. So um, I'm missing a word there. Right now. Inclusion. Um, inclusion. Inclusion. Thank you. <laughs> inclusion. <laughs> the diversity, equity, and inclusion committee, um, which is a weekly that uh, come to discuss any articles or research they might have done to place surrounding what the hiring process looks like now, um, especially trying to include um, more of a diverse field of employees um, and equity in the creative field um, and how to really create inclusion um, in the workplace. So that is something new that's happening at Top Floor currently. Yeah, and I was going to say, as a member of that committee, it's extremely interesting because every week we, I mean, at least try to educate ourselves with something new, um, something that we can do, and then also events within our community because I think it's really important to talk about, like, Top Floor definitely values community work and community outreach and stuff like that, so we've just kind of been looking at different ways in which, A, yes, we can... Um, help our hiring process and make sure that we're looking at an entire pool of candidates that are looked at thoroughly, but then also given the opportunity to even apply, because um, sometimes it's hard to find our applications, so just making sure they're out there. Um, but then with that, also just looking at events that we can go to, A, to educate on what digital marketing is, 
Um, Cause I'll even say like, I, I didn't know before I, I really applied for the job because I saw the requirements. I was like, I think I can, yeah, I think I meet that as an English major came in and I'm like, yeah, okay, this makes sense. Um, but it's a lot, it's a lot different than I think most people would think. So just educating on that, but then, I mean, just getting more involved in what we can do and um, what we can continue to do is to obviously help with anything happening in our hiring process, um, but then also holding our managers and everyone accountable to stay at these um, standards that we're now setting or going by. Um, so that is important to us. Yeah, and I think it's so important, you know, it's one thing to take a stand on something, but it's another thing to actually do the work. And um, it, it's meaningful to see that we have this new committee and, you know, from the top down, the ownership and management really supports us in our education and learning and growing. Um, and that just, it's just another really great culture point at top floor. Yeah. I'm really excited to see, I'm not in that committee, I'm really excited to see what they come up with because what I've heard, they've had two meetings and they're like, we've got a lot planned already. And I'm like, oh my, okay, so let's much. do this. Like they're all in, I love it. Love it. That's so awesome. Super all right, well, we have reached our time limit. This discussion has been so nice. nice. Um, I just wanted to end on a happy note and is, is there anything fun coming up that we can look forward to? Through the holidays are always my favorite with Top Blue. Can you give any secrets away? Well, one secret that I will give away is we have not started the holiday planning yet. But <laughs> I'll be brutally honest. But we have really cool, I'm super excited. We actually had a meeting yesterday in Top Blue for fall things. So Typically, um, fall at top floor consists of a chili cook-off, a costume contest, and then some sort of donation to breast cancer awareness. So chili cook-off probably won't happen. That's not going to work too well. Mm -hmm. um, but we came up with I, like cooler ideas, in my opinion. Abby and Leah, you can d agree or disagree because they know what they are. But I'm very excited. Um, some are virtual. Well, all our virtual, I don't know what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, we have some cool ideas to kind of still keep that fall fun alive. And then we'll figure out what the heck to do for the holidays. There's gonna be something and it's gonna be cool, but <laughs> we don't know. It might feature Justin in a Santa costume going to everyone's house. <laughs> I'm kidding, I just made that up. He might get mad at me for saying that anyway. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, I love yeah. it. Well, now we've got to make it happen. Well, we definitely will brainstorm, but yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much for this. This has been great. Um, to anybody who is watching live or rewatches the video, if you and your company do anything awesome or fun or um, different to help your culture as you're getting through this virtual craziness, um, drop them in the comments. We'd love to hear and we'd love to steal your ideas. Yeah. <laughs> or if you have questions of like, hey, how did you make this work? Or you really want to know what the secret fall thing is and you don't want to wait until we post it on social media. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Well, thanks again. And um, I hope you guys have a great afternoon. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.